Welcome to week three of the Webster Arts Summer Art Camp. So for your week three kit, you will be getting a set of watercolor paints. Um, you will also be getting a several sheets of illustrations to color in. And finally, you will be getting these artist tiles so also in the kit, there's some uh, instructions on how to work with watercolors and also some description of some art terms that I'll be talking about as we go through painting with watercolors today. When we talk about color, we talk about color in different ways. We describe color in terms of warm colors. So warm colors are red, orange, yellow, and cool colors would be green, blues, and purples. Also with watercolor paints, they're mostly translucent and you use water. Uh, you're going to need a cup of water to uh, wet your paintbrush, but also to dilute the paint. Um, but basically, uh, watercolors go on translucent and you have to continue to build the washes and as you do so that increases the saturation. So we'll be talking about those different uh, color terms as we progress. For beginners uh, we recommend taking one of the illustrations here and you'll also want to get a paper towel as well as a small cup or glass of water. So let's get set up. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna try to make a painting with just warm colors. So I was able to paint the warm colored still life and you can see that I'm using yellow, some lime green, pinks, a little bit of brown here. Uh, something I want to show is how to layer. So we were talking about color saturation earlier and with watercolor paints you're not going to get a lot of saturation but you can build it up, like what I did with the leaves here. If you use very small amount of water, so you might wanna tap the paper towel, and I'm just gonna show how I'm going to build a little bit more saturation in this red. Because right now it's actually showing up actually as a pink color. So I just want to show what you can do. Go back and do a layer. This is again called a dry on dry technique. Your brush is just a little damp. But you can see there that I am increasing the saturation of that red by using another layer and adding a little bit more This is a warm still life, warm colored still life, using watercolor paints with the kit that was provided for you. Okay, well.
welcome back. So we're still talking about week three's kit, the watercolor kit, where you get a set of watercolors. We were talking about the beginner, younger children level where you would just paint in, and we talked about warm colors and cool colors. Now we're gonna move on to some more advanced watercolor techniques, and we're gonna use these artist tiles so what I recommend, if you can, you can leave it in the book, but just bend it and pull one of the tiles out. The reason is the paper does warp a little bit. So something that you, if you have on hand, uh, you can use some painter's tape, just kind of tape down just the edge, and that way it won't lift or move around too much. You'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. So we're gonna do this. So another thing that you're gonna need is, again, a cup of water and paint brushes, other paint brushes, other size paint brushes, and then also a paper towel. So we're just gonna go through the different techniques for working with watercolor paint. So watercolors are a translucent paint medium. So that means that you are gonna get a lot of transparent washes, but there's just different ways to apply the paint, especially when you're working with a cold press artist tile like this. You can try different techniques out. So for the first technique, we're gonna talk about a wet on wet technique. So wet on wet means that you are going to load your paintbrush with some water. I actually have a little bit of color in there still. Really, really rinse it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a shape just in water. and fill that in. Now you're not gonna be able to really see it very well, depending on the lighting. So now I'm gonna go in with some color, just kinda of drop that color in there, and the paint's gonna fill in wherever you had your water. It's going to be a little heart shape. So I'm using, I'm putting wet paint already on a wet spot on the watercolor. So this is called wet on wet. And it should stay within the confines of where you just made that, that wet patch. So you can do shapes or really any kind of like pattern and just fill it in with a wet brush with color. So that's wet on wet. So I'm using a barely damp brush and that's just going on dry. What you get is a lot more saturation and a lot harder edge. When you do a wet on dry technique, you're going to use just more water, more of a wash, if you will. What's nice is you get a lot of saturation, intensity of color, but also this kind of wash look to it. So I'm going to show you another technique. So we're going to do, I'm just going to do a little circle of just water. Really get a good amount on there.
some, some red. And I'm gonna really load it up. And I'm just gonna see what happens when I just kind of drop a little bit of paint in there. So you really are letting, you're working with the water, you're letting the water do different things. In fact, I could probably try that on the part that I tried to make. Just see what happens. But when it's a, a wet drop technique like this, you can see how the water is moving that paint around. And you're not really doing much with the brush. You're just letting the water do different things. I'm gonna do a wet on wet cloud technique. So I'm gonna get this cloud. I don't know if that's gonna look very good, but we'll see. You want to blot out some of the color to kind of replicate a gradation. So we're gonna take your paper towel, fold it up, and just kind of blot. So you see I've, I've taken away not all the color, I've taken away some of the color on the top there. Basically I want my cloud, I want a little bit of blue, but I want there to be more saturation of that blue at the bottom of the cloud. Thank you. 